Hi folks, in this video I am going to show you how to do conditional authentication with WSO2 Identity Server. In previous two videos we discussed how you can log into Salesforce via WSO2 Identity Server. At that point we didn't apply any conditions during the login flow. Anyone from the Identity Server or the on-prem user store behind Identity Server if being provisioned to Salesforce, they could just log in. With conditional authentication, we can apply more complex authorization policies at the identity server. For example, we can make sure only the people who are in the sales team can log into Salesforce. If you want to uh, log into Google Apps with Identity Server, then you may let anyone in the company log into Google Apps, but only the employees belong to the sales team can log into the sales team. And also, you can define uh, uh, complex uh, access control roles like only only an administrator can log into a particular application during 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. during a weekday. Uh, while his IP address is internal. Likewise, Identity Server has a, a very flexible uh, policy model where you can define access control tools in the login flow itself. Let's see how to do that. And before that, if you hear about WSO2 Identity Server for the first time, it's an identity and access management server released under the most business friendly open source license Apache 2. You can go to wso2.com and go to products, identity and access management and from here you can download the identity server. The latest version is uh, 5301 so that is what I am uh, using uh, for this particular demo. I have already downloaded it. You need to have uh, JDK 1.8 plus and uh, set up the java home environment variable so that's all you need to have to get started let me start my identity server instance so this is the home directory of identity server so wso2 identity server 530 and bin directory you need to go inside bin and start the server with wso2 server.sh it will take around 40 to 50 seconds to start the server and it will start on the default port 9443 that's an HTTPS port if you need you can change the default ports by uh, by changing the offset value in repository conf carbon xml I haven't done any any changes with the default setup so it's all uh, a fresh pack uh, only I have set up the Salesforce uh, login uh, which I used in my previous two demos and I have I, I, I'll put the links to those two videos so you can go through them and see how you can configure identity server uh, to log into Salesforce yeah summer let's wait till uh, this gets started okay it's started now you can go to localhost 9443 HTTPS localhost 9443 identity server comes with an inbuilt uh, identity store that's an LDAP and I'm logging with a user from that particular LDAP the default credentials are admin admin now let's have a look at our service provider first okay yeah, so I'll just uncheck this one uh, okay, so this is a default service provider and uh, I haven't engaged any authorization policies or enable condition authentication uh, for this particular service provider to enable that I need to check this one so let me uncheck it so nothing engaged yet let me update this one and now let me try to log in so I should be able to log in without any issue here let me start a private window. You will see that I get redirected to the identity server. Let's log in with Prabhat. Okay, I can log into Salesforce. 
Okay. Then again, I have another user called Peter. Let me try to log in with that user too. Peter. Once again, no issue. I can just log in to Salesforce and keep in mind uh, both both the Peter and uh, Prabhat are uh, provisioned to uh, Salesforce and based on their role uh, you will see what they can do on Salesforce. So here you can see uh, Peter doesn't have any access to any items but uh, if you look at this stuff so he's in a role uh, doesn't have that much of privileges. Right. Yeah so he doesn't have access to uh, many stuff but he can still log into uh, Salesforce. Now let's see what roles Peter and Prabhat have in identity server. If you go here under users you can see Peter and Prabhat. If you look at the roles of Peter, okay, Peter doesn't have any specific role. So anyone in identity server will belong to the internal everyone role. So Peter doesn't have any specific role. And if you look at Prabhat, Prabhat is in sales team role. So let's define a policy which says only the people in sales team can log in to, to Salesforce between uh, between 8 a.m. and 11.50 p.m. Right now my local time is 11.40 so let's uh, uh, have the time limit till 11.50 so uh, Peter should be P, uh, Peter should not be able to log in because Peter doesn't uh, have the sales team role but Prabhat should be able to log in because Prabhat satisfies both the conditions time is fine and also Prabhat is in sales team role so let's go to policy administration here so these are the templates that we ship out of the box you can uh, pick whatever the template you need edit it and save as uh, so here I want to have a policy which talks about time and also role for authentication. So I'll pick this one, authentication time and role based policy template. Okay. First thing I need to do is, I don't need to override that policy template. I need to change the name here. Just the name, right? just put SF. Right? And then I need to replace this uh, values in the upper case to my own values so in this case i'm applying this policy to anyone who is trying to log into salesforce so this name should exactly match the name of the service provider so in our case it's salesforce now this says it's you are permitted login between 9 a.m and 5 p.m since my time is 11 41 p.m now uh, if I want to log in, I need to change this. Let's change it to 11.50. Okay. And this is an O. You should either you should be in role 1 or role 2. Let's change this role names to sales team. And other one is let's say solutions team. So that means anyone, any user either in sales team or solutions team can log into Salesforce through identity server if the time is between 9 a.m. and 11.50. Right? So it's, it's quite easy. You don't need to worry about what's, what's the logic here. You just need to replace the placeholders and we have the policy ready for you. So this is the policy we just edited. It didn't override the original one since we changed the name. Now we will deploy this policy. Check that. Publish. Publish. And then check on PDP uh, subscriber. And publish. So this policy is actually written in SACML. So, but you don't need to understand SACML to understand uh, what is done in these policies. This is the policy administration point. And if you go to the policy decision point and click on policy view you will be able to see the policy that we just deployed right so now we have the policy ready let's go back to the our service provider and go to local and outbound authentication configuration enable authorization 
even though you have the policy ready with a matching name uh, for the service provider name here if you don't enable authorization still it won't get applied right so I check this one update now all set now let's try to log in with Prabhat first Prabhat should be able to log in right because time is fine and also Prabhat is in the uh, sales team role yeah you can see Prabhat can log in okay now let's try to log in with Peter's account Peter should not be able to log in because Peter is not in the sales team role even though time is fine here you can see it's not a login failure authentication failure it's an authorization failure now let's change the policy right even though uh, the the Prabhat is in the uh, sales team role let's change the time right let's change the time to uh, 17 so you can even though you are in the sales team or solutions team you can log into salesforce only between 9 a.m and 5 p.m right so in this case since my time is 11 44 p.m none of these guys will be able to log into salesforce so here i need just an update right so you need to pick the pdp subscriber here that's the embedded policy decision point in is publish it and it will appear under the policy view here now let's go back so earlier Prabhat could log in right so now Prabhat should not be able to log in authorization failed that is because uh, the time is not between the allowed period I guess that concludes the demo today uh, next uh, demo we are going to do it on Google Apps. I'll explain how to enable single sign-on to Google Apps via WS2 Identity Server. Thank you very much.